All right, here's a couple of good questions. This one asks you to find the degree and the leading term of this polynomial. So I have this and it's squared, so that would be x to the sixth minus one times x to the sixth minus one. And then the next one would be x cubed plus two times x cubed plus two times x cubed plus two, because there's three of them. Okay, now you could just foil all this stuff out, but that would take you a long time. What you could do is just look at these and say, well, if I multiply this by this, I'm gonna get an x to the 12th, and then some other stuff. But if they're wanting to know what the leading term is and the degree, really I'm just looking at what the highest degree is. So I don't really care what this stuff is. Okay, same thing with this one. If I multiply those two, I'll get x to the sixth plus some other stuff, and then x cubed plus two. And then, uh, and it doesn't matter what order you do these in, I'll, I'll just multiply these two together. x to the sixth times x cubed, um, uh, multiply common bases, add their exponents, so it would be x to the ninth plus some other stuff. And then on the front, I have x to the 12th plus some stuff. If I were to foil all that, I'd multiply these first and get x to the 21st, plus foiling all the other stuff, I'm going to get smaller terms as I go down. Well, I don't need brackets. Anyway, the leading term will be the x to the 21st. And if they, so if they say, what's the leading term, I'd give them that. And if they say, what's the degree, the degree is always just the highest number, right? So the degree would be 21. Now this next question, they say, here's a um, function that talks about US travelers, whatever, uh, where x0 is 1990. If you have one, there's 1991, etc. cetera. So, and then they say, well, how many people traveled in 1990? So if 1990 from here is x equals zero, then what I could do is just figure out what the value of that function was when I plug in a zero everywhere I see an x. Uh, so zero cubed plus 0 0.1381 times zero squared plus 1.288 times zero, uh, just zero, plus 43.86. So plug in a zero in, and these first terms will all cancel because zero times anything is zero. So P of zero at the end is just going to be 43.86. Then what I can do is now they say, well, how about in the year 2000? Well, that'll be 10 years, so they want to figure out what the P of 10 is. So then what I do is I plug a 10 in everywhere there's an X and see what my answer comes out to. And so you can do that mathematically, you can do that on decimals. Another real useful way of doing that, and um, somebody in class was showing me that, um, is just by using it in decimals. So if I go to decimals, uh, let me move this down a bit so I can see the function, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna type in that function. I'll just call it y is equal to negative point zero zero five nine zero x to the third plus point thirteen eighty one thirteen eighty one uh, x squared plus one point two eight eight uh, x plus uh, forty three point eight six 3.86. There we go. Okay, where'd my graph go? Oh, it's way up there. There we go. Good. So there's my graph. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger. I don't know if that's helping me at all. Um, and they want to know what it is when x is e equal to zero. So that's that point right there. So the 43.86. If they want to know what it is after 10 years, I can just go to that point where it's equal to 10. So I can try it with my finger to figure that out. Or, easier, I can just in here say, well, x equals 10. And wherever that line crosses my graph, 
that'll be the, the number of travelers. So 64.65. I could make, ten, uh, instead of 10, maybe 19. I tap there, and that'll tell me that answer. So that answer there would be the same answer as if you would have plugged in a 19 in this case, plugged in a 19 everywhere there was an X. And it's not a bad idea to just practice doing the, the math way and the decimals way. Okay, hopefully that helps you with those two.